750 million people watched the wedding of Princess Diana to Prince Charles in 1981. When she died in an accident at the age of 36 on August the 31st, 1997, more than 2.5 billion people watched her funeral. At her funeral, the singer Elton John, some of you might remember, sang this beautiful song that brought tears to, uh, to uh, so many hundreds of eyes in Westminster Abbey when he sang Candle in the Wind to England's Rose. Interestingly, this song with the line, Goodbye, Norma Rose, was originally written for an equally glamorous woman Norma Jean, who, whose na stage name is Marilyn Monroe. You know what I'm old enough. <laughs> <laughs> she too died at the age of 36 on August the 5th, 1962, due to an overdose of sleeping pills. Diana and Marilyn share many things in common. Both were beautiful, wealthy, photographed by hundreds of paparazzi around the world and also unhappy in their marriage and their relationships and both died tragically in August, as I said, at the age of 36. Young icons whose lives were snuffed out like candles in the wind. Both had great fame and wealth, but ended up tragically dying way too soon. Let me mention someone else who had neither great physical beauty or fame at the outset. However, this person took what little God had given her and turned it over completely to God. And still today, we can see what God did with her modest gifts. Five days after Princess Diana died, there was another going home, this one for Mother Teresa of Calcutta canonized as St. Teresa, who died on September 4th, 1997, at age 86. And a lot of us thought, oh, it's really unfortunate because the, the, the big funeral of uh, Princess Diana overshadowed uh, Mother Teresa's departure. She was a wise woman spending her whole life sharing, sharing Christ's selfless, caring, self-sacrificing love with the downtrodden, especially in the streets of Calcutta. God blessed her humble gifts, put at the service of the poor and the lonely, allowing her small dozen original missionaries of charity to grow to a great congregation of more than 3,000, serving the poor and the discarded in over 100 countries. Just as that small boy in the gospel turned over his five little loaves and two dried fish to the Lord, and Jesus used these simple gifts to feed the 5,000, so he does something even more wonderful at every Eucharist. What little we and our families have to offer in the Eucharist, he multiplies many times over using it to nourish not only our families, our friends, our neighbors abundantly, but unknown people living and dead, known and unknown to us. But God knows. God doesn't just give us enough. He gives us abundantly for the sake of the world and for our families. This uh, miracle of the multiplication of the loaves is one of the few incidents reported in all four Gospels. And it's a reminder to us that this was a physical feeding of these of uh, 5,000 people. And they had 12 wicker baskets left over. But the spiritual feeding that continues down through the centuries is much more marvelous even than that great gift of our Lord Jesus Christ to us and the world. Amen. Mm -hmm.